Hello friends. Welcome to Let's Tutor Accountancy. In the last session, we explained the concept of cash and liquidity. We also talked about cash inflows and outflows in detail. In today's session, we are going to learn about the three broad categories in which cash flows are classified, and we will also see how these categories are presented in the cash flow statement. But before we start today's session, I would urge you to visit our website www.letstute.com where you will find a variety of accountancy courses available at super affordable prices. So do check that out. Now let's begin with today's session. Let's start by identifying the primary activities within the cash flow statement. These activities can be classified under three headings. The first heading is cash flow from operating activities. Next, we will look at cash flow from investing activities. And lastly, we will look at cash flow from financing activities. For better understanding and presentation, all the cash inflows and outflows, in other words, cash movements, are classified under these three headings. Now let's begin by understanding the first cash flow activity in detail. The first activity is cash flow from operating activities. Operating activities are the principal revenue producing activities of the enterprise and other activities that are not investing and financing. In simple words, here we record the transactions related to the sources and uses of cash from regular business activities. When we think about examples of regular business activities, such activities would include buying and selling of goods, providing services to customers, paying salaries to employees and making payments towards expenses for the day-to-day -day operations of the business. To put it in simple words, we can say that here we record the transactions related to the income statement. The amount of cash flow arising from operating activities is a key indicator of the extent to which the operations of the enterprise, organization or business have generated sufficient cash flows to manage activities like paying dividends, repayment of loans, making new investments, etc. without borrowing additional funds from external sources. We hope that the first activity of cash flow statements has been made clear to you. Now let's understand the second activity within the cash flow statement, which is cash flow from investing activities. Under the second heading of investing activities, transactions related to the acquisition and disposal of long-term assets and other investments which are not included in cash equivalents are to be shown. In simple terms, we can say that the cash transactions related to the asset side of the balance sheet are to be shown here. For example, a company purchased new machinery worth 1 million. This transaction will be recorded as a cash outflow transaction under the heading of cash flow from investing activities because it involves expenditure made towards acquiring a fixed asset for the business. Let's look at another example. The sale of an investment worth 200,000. This is a cash inflow transaction which will be classified under the heading of investing activities within the cash flow statement. This is because the sale of an investment brings cash into the business. Cash flow from investing activities also indicate the expenditures made towards resources intended to generate future income and cash flows. For example, the purchase of a non-current investment is a cash outflow transaction, which will be recorded under the investing activities heading in the cash flow statement. Since this purchase will generate revenue from the investment in future. Now let's move to the third activity within the cash flow statement called cash flow from financing activities. Financing activities comprise of activities resulting in the change of the size and composition of the owner's capital and borrowings of the enterprise. So these activities are mainly related with the capital and liability side of the business which means any increase or decrease in the cash flow which are related to capital and long-term funds would be recorded here. For example, a company bought back shares worth 2 million. 
now as the company has bought back the shares there is a decrease in the balance of capital in the company and simultaneously a decrease in the cash balance of the company as the shareholders will be paid in the form of cash let's look at another example a company issues new equity shares worth 5 million this transaction is an example of a cash inflow transaction which is directly related with the capital and liability side of the balance sheet so this transaction will be recorded as a cash inflow transaction under the heading of cash flow from financing activities cash flow from financing activities are useful in predicting claims on future cash flows by the providers of the fund both capital and borrowings so for example when we raise a loan from the bank it represents a cash inflow transaction but at the same time it indicates that the loan amount will have to be repaid to the bank later which will result in an outflow transaction in future so friends we hope that the three primary activities within the cash flow statements have been made clear to you let's understand the difference between these three activities by classifying some items with the help of a balance sheet and an income statement Let's begin by looking at the balance sheet. Under the liability side, when we look under share capital and long-term borrowings, the issuance of shares, the buyback or redemption of shares, the issuance of debentures, the redemption of debentures, long-term loans and loan repayment would classify as financing activities. Under current liabilities, creditors, bills payable, outstanding expenses would classify as operating activities now let's look at the asset side under long term assets and investments the purchase of fixed assets the sale of fixed assets the purchase of non current investments and the sale of non current investments are classified under investing activities if we look under current assets debtors stock and bills receivable would classify as operating activities now let's look at a segment of the income statement also known as the profit and loss statement payment made towards goods and services employee salaries other expenses and the receipt from sale of goods and services classify as operating activities let's revise what we learned today by solving some multiple choice questions i would encourage you to pause the video Once each question is displayed, note down your answer, then you can play the video to verify your answer and also listen to the explanation. So let's start solving. Question number 1. The cash flow statement can be categorized into how many headings? Option A, 3. Option B, 4. Option C, 5. Or option D, 6. Come on friends, we just discussed this. The answer to this is option A, 3. The three activities which I just mentioned were operating, investing and financing activities. Let's look at the next question. Question number 2. Which activity in the cash flow statement is related to a change in the size of owner's capital? Option A, investing activity. Option B, operating activity. Option C, financing activity or option D. none of the above the answer to this question is option c financing activity as we discussed earlier in this session financing activities comprise of activities resulting in the change of the size and composition of the owner's capital and borrowings of the enterprise let's look at another question question number 3 which of the following statements is not an example of a cash flow from investing activities Option A a company bought machinery worth 200000 Option B a company purchased shares of XYZ limited worth 300000 Option C a company purchased debentures of ABC limited worth 20000 or option D a company has issued new debentures of 200000 The answer to this question is option D A company issuing new debentures of 200,000 is an example of a financing activity. Options A, B and C are examples of investing activities. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर कंपनी बी पेड फाइव हंड्रेड थाउजेंड फॉर अ बिजनेस लोन वॉट टाइप ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन इज दिस एंड अंडर विच हैडिंग विल दिस बी डिस्प्लेड इन द कैश फ्लो स्टेटमेंट ऑप्शन ए अ कैश इन फ्लो ट्रांजेक्शन अंडर द इन्वेस्टिंग एक्टिविटी हैडिंग ऑप्शन बी अ कैश आउटफ्लो ट्रांजेक्शन अंडर द इन्वेस्टिंग एक्टिविटी हैडिंग ऑप्शन सी अ कैश इन फ्लो ट्रांजेक्शन अंडर द फाइनेंसिंग एक्टिविटी हैडिंग और ऑप्शन डी अ कैश आउटफ्लो अंडर द फाइनेंसिंग एक्टिविटी हैडिंग द आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन इज ऑप्शन डी अ कंपनी पेइंग फॉर अ बिजनेस लोन इज क्लियरली एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ कैश आउटफ्लो ट्रांजेक्शन एंड दिस टाइप ऑफ ट्रांजेक्शन वुड कम अंडर द फाइनेंसिंग एक्टिविटीज हैडिंग क्वेश्चन नंबर फाइव विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज नॉट एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ कैश फ्लो फ्रॉम ऑपरेटिंग एक्टिविटीज ऑप्शन ए कैश रिसीट्स फ्रॉम सेल ऑफ गुड्स ऑप्शन बी कैश रिसीट्स फ्रॉम द सेल ऑफ एन एसेट ऑप्शन सी कैश पेमेंट्स मेड टू अ सप्लायर फॉर गुड्स और ऑप्शन डी कैश पेमेंट्स मेड टू एम्प्लॉज इन द फॉर्म ऑफ सैलरी The answer to this question is option B cash receipts from sale of an asset. This is an example of an investing activity. Options A, C and D are examples of operating activities. With this we can effectively wrap up our second session on cash flow statements. In the upcoming sessions we will understand the two main methods used in preparing a cash flow statement which are the direct and indirect methods respectively after understanding these methods we will have problem solving sessions for both methods subsequently so stay tuned with us do visit our website www.letstude.com where many accountancy and other course content is made available at very affordable prices if you like today's session don't forget to like and share the video with your friends do subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get an instant notification when we upload videos in future see you all in the next session till then keep watching keep learning thank you